Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we will be learning about how to set up the restriction digestion reaction. So uh, first question is, what is the restriction digestion? What do we mean by the restriction digestion? So the restriction digestion is a process by which the DNA fragment is cleaved by using or by the action of the restriction endonucleases. So the restriction endonucleases are the type 2 class of endonucleases which cleaves the DNA molecule within or near those sites which having the specific base sequences. So today we will be digesting plasmid DNA in which I have cloned my gene of interest. That's why it has become recombinant DNA molecule. So uh, my gene of interest is flanked by the two different restriction endonucleases site that is KPN1 and SAC1. So today we will be performing the double digestion by using the enzymes uh, SAC1 and KPN1. If you wonder how these two different restriction sites has flanked my gene of interest, so uh, while amplifying this gene, I have designed primers in a such a way that those primers containing the uh, KPN1 and SAC1 site for forward and reverse primers respectively. Then I have amplified it and then I have cloned it into the subcloning method. So what are the requirements for setting up a digestion reaction? So we should have certain components in our hands to start with. So the first thing that we need is the restriction endonuclease buffer, which is generally supplied uh, with the restriction endonuclease. We also need the nucleus pre-water or we, also, we can also use the sterile milky water. We also need the recombinant DNA, which is subjected to restriction digestion. And make sure none of the component is contaminated with the DNases or RNases. Otherwise, it will interfere with our reaction. And definitely, we need the restriction endonucleases. In this case, we are using the KPN1 and SAC1, which I have kept in the chiller. While adding to the reaction, I will show you. So today we are setting up a double digestion reaction, which means we are digesting our recombinant DNA molecule with the two different restriction endonucleases. And I'm doing it at one step. Since uh, these two SAC1 and KPN1 restriction endonucleases having same buffer, as well as their incubation time is, or uh, sorry, incubation temperature is same, uh, that is uh, 37 degrees Celsius. So in this case, I don't need to set up the sequential digestion reaction. I can add these two uh, different, that is uh, SAC1 and KPN1 restriction endonuclease in one reaction. So we'll start setting up the reaction. So today we are going to set up 50 microliter reaction uh, in which we are digesting uh, one microgram of our recombinant plasmid DNA by using 5 units of KPN1 and SAC1 restriction endonucleases. So first uh, we will add the nucleus free water. Calculation you can see on my screen. So the first we will add the nucleus free water or sterile milky water. Then we, we will add the, the uh, restriction endonucleases buffer. Uh, which is having concentration of uh, 10x. So the final concentration will go is 1x. So that will come around 5 microliters. And make sure that you have uh, thawed this uh, uh, restriction endonuclease buffer at room temperature and you have vertexed it. So uh, there is no precipitation. the buffer has been added now we will add our plasmid dna so uh, the concentration of my plasmid dna is around 188 nanogram per microliter so for digesting one microgram i need uh, around 5.4 microliter of uh, plasmid dna so we'll add 5.4 microliter of plasmid dna Now a buffer, nucleus free water and the plasmid has been added. Now we will add the KPN1 and followed by SAC1. 
so the sec1 nkpn1 has uh, 10 20000 units per uh, ml so in one one microliter it will be around 20 uh, units uh, so in this uh, reaction, we are going to add only five units to digest within one hour. For adding five units, I need to add 0 0.25 microliter of SAC1 and KPN1. Now both enzymes has been added. We will give, uh, we will mix it with the pipette first, and then we will uh, give a short spin to our uh, this reaction tube, and we will keep it at thirty seven degrees Celsius for one hour. After adding uh, each component, we have to gently mix with the pipette. And we can give a short spin also to the tube and we can keep it in 37 degrees Celsius. So I have prepared one person gel. Now we will load our reaction. So first, uh, some people may inactivate the restriction digestion reaction. And uh, today I am not going to inactivate the restriction digestion reaction. We will add the gel loading dye into it, and I will load entire reaction. So uh, the, the preparation of gel is dependent on your uh, insert. If your insert is very small, you can go for higher percent of gel. Here my insert is bigger, so I have, uh, I have gone with a, a lower percent of gel. I'm going to load uh, one cable ladder also to track my gel as well as my release. And for control, uh, whether that digestion has been carried out or not uh, for that we have to load the uncut uh, dna we don't have to load one microgram we have to load around 40 to 100 nanogram of it so i'm loading uncut first now we'll load the uh, restriction digestion reaction I will load entire reaction because I want to gel purify the my release and I have to ligate it into the another vector which uh, previously digested with the uh, SAC1 and KPN1 restriction in the nucleus sites.
after running the gel three fourth, we can observe it under the UV transilluminator or gel documentation system. Here you make sure that uh, you are not exposing uh, your gel for a longer period of time to the UV. Uh, here you can see uh, the released fragment from the recombinant plasmid in the third well, which is having size of approximately 1.3 kb. This same gel image I have taken under the gel documentation system. Here you can see. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.